Hello and welcome to today's APBP Women's Cycling Project case study. My name is Kit Keller. I'm Executive Director of the Association of Pedestrian and Bicycle Professionals. It's my pleasure today to welcome Fanula Quinn to tell us a little bit about a program that she co-founded in Virginia. And speaking of co-founding, Fanula is the co-founder of APBP's Women's Cycling Project, and she is also an engineer with Alta Planning and Design. We're delighted that Fanula has joined us today. Welcome, Fanula. Thank you, Kit. Um, thanks for inviting me to, to speak about um, the Junior Engineer Training Program at Hunters Woods Elementary School in Reston. Um, this is um, a program I've been involved in for the last five years. And it's a real labor of love, um, and it's something I thoroughly enjoy. Um, it is a program um, for fifth and sixth grade students um, to participate in engineering activities. Um, it is um, a weekly class that we run at Hunter's Woods. Um, we run it year round. Hunter's Woods is a, a Fairfax County elementary school that happens to be one of their two science and math um, and arts tech magnet schools. I had a couple of kids who, who went through the school and before my youngest left, I really wanted to establish um, such a program at the school and went to the principal. Um, a brand new teacher had also gone to the principal with a similar idea. Her name is Ji An. The principal matched us together, said you two need to do this together. And at the time, the principal said, and you should run this program for girls. She said, we have lots of programs already, like Lego League, um, which are dominated by boys. She said, I'd really like to see something where um, girls had real opportunity um, um, to be together um, working on engineering. So we started the program. Um, it's volunteer run in that we both volunteer. Um, we've actually added um, another teacher since to our little group. Her name is Rachel Negri, and she also is one of the dedicated science teachers at the school. G and Rachel um, both um, have, um, they are dedicated um, to science in the classroom. And we use their um, science room as our base. Um, it is a before school activity. It's an hour a week. Um, we have um, done longer classes some years, but it really just depends on school start time. Um, we probably could do a lot more in, in an hour and a half or two hours. Um, we offer it to fifth and sixth grade students only. Um, we have 20 um, slots in the class. Um, students are there by invitation. Um, teachers nominate them. They select students who they think could benefit, um, who may perhaps have been um, neglected in some way in that they have some ability um, that really they could be promoted to encourage them um, to realize um, um, the opportunities that are there for them. Um, it's a very low budget operation. That was one of our goals from the start. Um, we wanted to just use materials that were already available to us. Um, and it has been extremely popular. Again, because there's a limited number of spots, um, it's really been a program where um, you know, only a small number of people could participate, and we've always had um, many people um, wishing they could be in the program. Um, part of why it succeeded is we've had wonderful school support since day one. Um, while they could not um, provide funds to us, what they could do was provide space, allow us um, to take the girls um, from other activities and go on field trips. Um, and just all around be extremely supportive um, of the program. Um, part of the idea behind it is that we are promoting the concept of engineering. We're not trying to teach engineering. Um, we're trying to promote um, this idea that it's out there, that it's part of the everyday world, that it actually permeates the everyday world. We try and um, help the girls see engineering all around of them. Um, we also want them to be aware of the, the vast range of engineers in their lives that um, touch every aspect of how they live in the built world. 
And then we then want them to think about the varied future possible careers they could have um, in those worlds. Um, there are many programs in our school system um, for older grades at the middle and high school level, but we were concerned that um, they were really closed to the girls in that they weren't really thinking about them. They, they were turning away um, early um, in their own ideas of what they should be um, when they grow up. We also wanted the parents to be aware of all the programs that are within the school system and out in the wider community. And to encourage the parents to think of their daughters as um, you know, having opportunities in engineering. Um, and another goal was to just enhance the creative en image of engineering, that, it was, um, that design was fun. And I think we've succeeded in all these um, goals. Um, we very much um, run this as hands-on activities in the classroom. We um, have no set curriculum. Um, I think in part because G and I enjoy um, trying out new ideas. Um, we test out um, sort of any sort of idea that comes into our head that depends on supplies that are easily available to us. Um, the activity pictured is actually slightly different. We applied for a grant um, to build a generator bike. And that was an activity we ran over several weeks. And as part of that, we had students bring in bicycles and tools and had them, you know, just work on bicycles, um, something which they completely enjoyed. Um, we find over and over that the students have not been exposed to these type of activities and um, really enjoy, um, you know, getting their hands dirty and making a mess. We generally have the students work together in teams. Um, every week they come in, there'll be some sort of challenge. They never know what to expect. We now um, try and limit our activity to um, getting the activity completed within the class. We find it doesn't work so well if they linger between classes and as students don't show up. Um, but we also try and always um, insert the engineering aspect of the activity. For example, we'll have them do little engineering drawings before they go build something. Um, we always pause to say, well, what type of engineer would work on this aspect? And do you know anybody in the community who is that type of engineer? And um, so we can't try and provoke the discussion and the wider um, ideas um, behind everything that we do. Um, some examples of activities that we challenges are um, here we have um, building a human arch um, that won't break when someone pulls on it. Um, we, here's another one, um, the skyscraper challenge. Design and build the tallest skyscraper with two sheets of paper that can hold a golf ball. Another one, um, design and build a bridge with 11 inch span from pasta to hold five bags of coins. We're always working with low cost, easily available um, materials. We regularly invite in visitors um, from both the community, uh, the parent community, and from public officials um, in our area. We find that absolutely everybody um, who we ask will do anything for us. Um, here we have um, a local uh, parent engineer who brought in a satellite. We are close to many high-tech firms in our area. Here, a uh, local county bike coordinator who's civil engineer so talking about her background. Um, Virginia Department of Transportation engineer um, talking about some traffic control um, activities. And uh, a local um, engineer involved in water resources. Um, we have many follow-on field trips from these visitors or from just um, public facilities that we ask, can we come see? Here we went with the traffic engineer down to the close by intersection. It happened they had a, they were in the middle of redesigning it to improve ADA, ac ADA access, which we, we looked at the um, deficiencies in the intersection, uh, opened up the signal control box. Um, these are all things the students have never thought about and uh, find actually fascinating. Um, on the right, here we went to visit um, a close by elementary school. Um, the elementary school is Terraset and it had been in the 70s, it had been built as this very innovative facility that was built underground and it had all solar panels um, which had long since been abandoned. Um, we asked could we come visit it. 
turned out we were the first school group um, to ask. We had a wonderful field trip there and we learned about why the system failed. We often talk about failures um, um, and, and learn a lot from just all the processes um, within the community. I mentioned that it's a very low budget operation. We try and just use recyclables, the schools supplies that are available to us like markers, tape, etc. in the classroom. We regularly ask parents to collect whatever we're, we're planning to use in upcoming classes. We collect those, um, we collect kitchen towels, newspapers, we make great use of those clementine um, wooden crates. If we notice somebody throwing something out in large quantities, we'll think up an activity for it. We saw um, an engineering office throwing out big rolls of um, drawings. We make great use of those. We borrow household items. We've asked everybody to bring in their salad spinners or their egg beaters um, to make use of them for classes. And we always make great use of construction toys. We borrow Lego, erector sets, etc. And those are always wonderful um, for use in the classroom. We do actually survey the students um, when they come into the class to ask them about their background in construction toys. And we actually find that many of them have very limited exposure to the likes of Lego, which was a surprise to me at the start. We also um, usually ask the incoming group to draw a picture of um, what they think an engineer looks like. Um, and early on, we often found they drew pictures of a boy um, doing engineering stuff. Now, I think that's changed over the years as the awareness has increased in the school. We find also that there are many events taking place in the community, and we either take field trips to them or we encourage the parents, we give them the information and encourage them to bring the whole family. Um, here we are at um, the National Building Museum, which has a family engineering day. We attend an annual girls engineering conference at a local elementary school, which is wonderful. And we let them know about anything, um, classes, workshops, anything that's going on in the community or during the summer. Um, we do hold one or two parents' nights during the year. And we have found um, that they love the hands-on activities just as much as the students. Um, part of our goal is for them to know um, what the students, what's open to the students in the future. So we have engaged them, and they have been an incredibly supportive part of um, the whole program. I mentioned that the school is based in Reston. And Reston, Virginia, some may recognize the name, it was a master planned community in the 70s. And it, the visionary behind that community was Robert E. Simon. Um, it's, the initials R-E-S were used to create the name Reston. And Mr. Simon is a resident of the community. He's turning 99 this year. And we are very lucky that we have him come in and visit us every year at the program. He is a true visionary, and he talks about all the principles behind the design and his vision for the community. And it's just this wonderful um, thing that we're able to do. We have taken walking field trips with him where he shows us his design in the community. And it's something that the school gets extremely excited about. Um, what you can't see in the pictures is there's a whole host of teachers in the background listening to him. He's been a wonderful um, connection to the program. Um, one year, a number of years ago, we had invited in um, a representative from, uh, um, to talk about the Shelter Box program. This is a program where um, a, a charity goes in and um, provides kits to communities immediately after disasters. We had given the challenge to the girls the week before where they asked them what, we asked them what they would put in a kit after a big earthquake in the community, um, how, you would, um, create, how you would assist a family uh, of 10 for six months, what supplies would you give them. And then we had, had um, the shelter box representative come in and show what's actually in the kit. So here, here we're working on assembling the tent. Um, what happened next was the very next week, the same day as our class, the Haitian earthquake um, struck. So it had actually a profound effect on all of us who had been involved in that particular um, set of classes. So 
what we ended up doing was the class organized, people really wanted to um, uh, get shelter boxes to Haiti and we ended up organizing the whole school and raising $11,000 so that we could send 11, 11 kits to Haiti. So that was really a very special activity that year. We do constantly try and reinforce the connections um, with the services in the community to recognize sort of all the engineers who play a role in creating our built world. And this year, we came up with this idea of sending Valentines um, to all the um, agencies um, we could think of in our area, such as the Metro, the Department of Transportation, the Recycling Services, um, the Water Services, etc. So we, we created little rhymes, sent out Valentines, and what we hadn't realized was what a huge flurry of response we would um, cause. Um, we've heard back from all these agencies, and now we have all sorts of invitations for additional field trips, etc. But it did actually, it, was, it did serve as a reminder that there is very little interaction between the schools and these agencies. And as I've mentioned, um, whenever we ask for anything, they roll out the red carpet um, and do anything for us. So that's been an extremely positive aspect of the program. Um, as to resources, there are so many wonderful resources on the internet. We dip into them all the time. Here are a few suggestions. We're lucky to be close to the National Building Museum, which has wonderful resources on their site. And um, there's many, many more available. We try and make engineering fun. That has been a primary goal since day one, um, and we have succeeded in doing that over and over. Um, here's our group after our annual um, gingerbread engineering class. We, draw, we make drawings and create our gingerbread um, structural creations. Um, but really has enhanced the image of engineering, not just within all the students who've gone through our program, but throughout the school. And we have found over and over that teachers request our activities, copy our activities, and have worked engineering ideas into the classroom um, throughout the school. So it really has been an incredibly as um, positive aspect, again, of the program, just introducing the idea of engineering for everybody. Engineering is fun. So thank you very much. Um, and that's our junior engineering train program. Junior, junior Engineer and Training Program at Reston, Virginia. Thank you. Fanula, thank you so much. This was a fascinating program and inspiring. I hope that it gives a lot of people watching this inspiration and um, a blueprint to go ahead and start something similar in their own schools. The Association of Pedestrian and Bicycle Professionals also hopes that this will be the first in a series of many case studies about innovative programs that can encourage more young people, particularly girls, to engage in creating bicycle-friendly communities by design. This case study in 2013 is designed to supplement or complement our regular annual Women Cycling Project webinar. We generally follow the Women's History Month theme, which excitingly this year is on women in science, technology, engineering, and math, what is sometimes referred to as the STEM fields, and about how women can inspire innovation uh, in their own communities and across the world. So if you do have a project that is similar to this or one that you would like to share with others, I encourage you to contact APBP at info at APBP.org and we would love to work with you to develop a case study and feature it on our website. With that, Fanula, thank you so much for taking time to share this case study with us and we wish you all the best in your program. Thank you so much. Thank you.